Hello and welcome back to this, our third tutorial on updating our good old friend the Pixar teapot and its metal box from the traditional way of rendering in Renderman through to the newfangled physically plausible shading system in Renderman in 2013, so that's Renderman Studio uh, 4.0. This is working with Renderman from Maya, I can't remember the version. Um, okay. So we got this far in the first two tutorials. We basically put in our new system of lights, which are the random lights, which are up here. These are the random area lights. And we've also used physically plausible shaders, namely the matte material and the general purpose shader, general purpose surface. OK, so our scene is looking reasonable now, still not looking fantastic. Before we progress, I really would like to clean up some of the stuff we have in our scene because we've got a lot of extraneous materials here which were necessary when it was being worked on um, but not necessary to my scene now and I find it much easier to work with a clean scene. So it's something which I'll just show you how I'd go about doing this. So first thing I'm going to do is select everything in my scene that I do want to keep. All these objects here which are in my scene. Excellent. And I'm going to make a new layer with them. So this is create layer with the selected objects. So I've created a layer with those selected objects in there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go show. I'm going to show all. So we have a bunch of other stuff in our scene which I didn't really know was there when I opened it originally and I don't really want it. And now I can hide the stuff that I do want. Select everything I can see here and get rid of it. Some stuff won't actually disappear because it's um, to do with scenes, so it's not actually possible to delete. Well, it is, but a bit more complex. So we've cleared out some stuff from what we were working with. Okay. Still have quite a lot of stuff in our scene. Let's get rid of some of this. The first thing I want to do, in actual fact, is I want to go to my box, and I'd like to actually tidy up this. It's a group within a group within a group, which is not necessarily the way I like to work. So holding down from the group here, the box group, Holding down Shift and P will actually unparent it from everything else. So that'll get rid of that. Now with our geometry for the teapot, it's in group 24 under movement, under group 11, top of teapot. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff here. So let's just isolate this and see what's going to happen. So if I go display and Hide unselected. Whoops, display, hide, unselected objects. Let's hope that we have everything that's necessary. I think we do. Let's just select this and focus on it. Yeah, that's all the stuff we need. So that's everything we need. I'm going to select it all here, just in the viewport, and I'm going to Shift P to unparent it. Okay. So it's now unparented from everything else, and Control G to group it. Now I'm going to go into this group here, and I'm going to call it Teapot. Okay. Let's go back to Display and show all, and go back to our same view here. See if we can st still see everything that's there. Do we need that group 24? No, we don't. Do we need any of these groups or locator groups? Nope, we don't need those. These herd groups? Nope. We strip things down quite quickly to a bare necessity of what we need for our scene, which helps us working as we go forward. Okay, much prefer this. Now, let's have a look at our previous rendered image. Now, it's looking okay, but it's not looking photorealistic, it's not looking physically plausible whichever way you want to think of this. One of the reasons why is we don't actually have any ray tracing in our scene currently. And ray tracing is kind of important to actually get a really realistic look to what's going on. So let's turn on, let's get our random and controls, and let's go to features and turn on ray tracing. Now the current settings will probably do us fine. Settings being that we actually have a max ray depth of 4 and a specular depth of 2, which means that reflections will work with 2. Um, diffuse is set to 1. Yeah, that's going to be fine. 
So let's see what result we get when we actually run this. Now the render will be slightly slower than it was previously. So I'll try re-rendering this. Try re-render. And we'll just wait for this to happen. While this is happening, let's just consider what's going on here now. There's an awful lot more rays of light being calculated. Um, so it will actually take, take more time for this to to appear. Okay, and let's just have a look while this is happening. I'm going to raise all windows so I can actually see my windows. Raise all. So I can see the list of what's happening here in my hub. So this was the previous and this is the ray traced. And we can see a significant improvement there. For a start, we're getting shadows and we have multiple shadows because we have multiple lights of the shadows turned on. But we're also getting the reflection of the teapot here, which adds quite a lot to the physical believability of this scene. Okay, so from that to that, quite a step up. Now the next thing which would be interesting to do would be actually to put in some bounce light, because light is bouncing off this plane here and bouncing up onto the objects and bouncing from the teapot, for instance, and back onto the box. Now, how we do this is we actually use a renderman node, and the node which we use, if you followed some of our earlier tutorials, you will have seen this. It's going to be the renderman GI light, RMS GI light, which we can access through the renderman menu in the top bar. Okay. So we put this in, we just get a tiny little node here. The size of it is not critical. What it's doing is basically saying to the scene that we're going to be calculating global illumination, which is bounce light. Now, if I select this and have a look at some of the attributes, the attribute editor, oops, I selected the wrong object. Let me just make sure I've got it selected here. Yeah, like there, there we go. So, it's working with 64 samples, which is reasonably low, and bounces are set to 1. Generally, we want bounces to be set to 2 or 3 to make at least um, some effect. Okay, 1 will give us some, but it's not particularly brilliant, and samples will be okay. Um, the more samples we have, the less noise we'll have in our image. But it will take a longer to render, so I'll go and re-render this. And again, we're calculating a lot of light which is bouncing around in our scene now. So it will take slightly longer to render from our previous scene. But again, the results will look different and will look more physically correct. Now, you may be able to pick up in our screen capture here, there's a bit of noise going on. It's something I'm particularly worried about at the moment. It's something which we can look at sorting out when we actually get to final renders. Reducing noise is something which is always possible to do, but at the same time, it reduces or sorry, it increases render time. So it's not something which we're concerned with when we're just looking at general quality. Okay, almost done. And renders do take time. Okay, now let's have a look at our hub again and see the difference between this, which is with bounce light, and this. And you can see it is brightening up the scene, particularly in areas which are in shadow. So we're getting bounce light from the floor hitting the, um, the teapot, from the floor hitting the object here, hitting the box, and from the teapot hitting the box. So it brightens things up. And again, comparing between this scene and this scene, pretty dramatic. Okay. Now, one thing which I want to do is, I generally don't like to have shadows coming from all directions. I know it's physically correct when we've got different lights in our scene. Um, what I will probably do in this case is I'll actually get rid of some of the lights. Because we're dealing with um, some global illumination, we don't necessarily need to have all the lights in our scene. So what I'll do, just drag this over here for a second, I'll go to my four view window here, and currently, let's see which lights we need. I think this is the main light which is giving us 
giving us our illumination. Let me just see if I have that one selected. Yep, that's the one that's giving us our shadow, our major light. I'm just going to delete these for the moment. Okay, I just don't necessarily want them. And again, in this viewport, I have saved my bookmark, my view here. We'll go back to here and we'll re-render. Now this will actually render slightly quicker than it did before, just slightly, but it will be slightly darker because we only have one light in the scene, but we will only have one shadow source. It's not necessarily correct, but I prefer to have one light casting shadow. Okay, yes, it's darker. Coming through, coming through. And we're getting some nice dark shadows here. One other thing, when you've got um, multiple light sources, we're actually filling in shadows. Okay. Not looking too bad. Now, my next step to getting this looking more physically realistic is I'm going to put in an environment light. We've worked with some environment lights before in previous tutorials. I'll be using exactly the same method here. So I've just clicked on environment light here, which creates, oops, let's just zoom out here and let's look around. It creates this dome light, which we can then apply a material to. And no surprise, I'll be using my favorite EXR, which comes from Pixar. Um, Fin4 EXR works like a dream out of the box. Let's go back to our original view. And I'll try re-rendering. Now, one of the beauties of having EXR is we get really, really nice reflections from it. Get nice reflections, it also outputs light. So this will be a dramatic improvement again in quality and will give us the kind of global illumination, the fill light, which we also want to have in the scene. So let's re-render. You can see for a start, we're getting a really nice reflection here on the top of our tin box. And we'll also see some very nice reflections in our teapot when it starts to render now. Okay, almost done. Again, I'm using a reasonably powerful home computer. It's not anything particularly special. Almost complete. Now, just thinking where we're going to be moving from here, we've got a lighting solution here, which I'm reasonably happy with. From here, what I want to do is I actually want to move forward with working on the shaders. I'd like to particularly work on the shader for the teapot, the teapot and its feet. And also I'll do a little bit more on the tin box because the tin box doesn't look quite like my tin box that I have for, um, for my Renderman teapot. So I'll do a little bit more work on that. And also possibly for the final image, we'll try and reduce the shading noise, which we have for our shadows here. And these things are all fixable and interesting to work with. But if we have a look here, the difference between this image here and our original image, which we have here in our view. So that's without the um, environment light. That's with the environment light. Let's just have a look. So that's quite a dramatic improvement in realism. And yes, we've got some noise here. That's generally down to sample sizes and other aspects like that, which are fixable in our final render. Going to leave things here for the moment and come back in a couple of minutes with the next part of the tutorial, which will be looking at materials. Um, it may well break into two parts because we're going to have a look at the RMS GPS in greater detail. So let's see how we go. Hopefully I'll get another two or three tutorials out today for you. Okay, thanks very much for your time and I'll catch you soon.